All right. Okay. Got got the microphone going now. So for um, today, one of the things that I had asked you to do is to make sure that you had finished reading the opening part of our Seven Habits book. Uh, we talked about what a habit is last week, and this time we're going to talk about what paradigms and principles are. And basically, and that kind of relates to the podcast we had at the beginning, um, where we take a look at what you're doing and who you're with can really either bring you up or it can very much pull you down. So, all-time ten stupid quotes. You ready for these? You might have read them in the book, but I think they're, they're worthy for us to hear again. Okay, quote number one. There's no reason for any individual to have a computer in their home. Okay, that was said in 1977. Here we go. Marshall Fernwood Falk, a French military strategist, said in 1911, Airplanes are interesting toys, but they have no military value. Okay. Man will never reach the mood regardless of all future scientific advances. And that was set in 1967 by Dr. Lee D. Forrest. Okay. We have somebody said in 1946, television won't be able to hold to the market it captures after the first six months. People will soon get tired at staring at a plywood box every night. Now you stare at it like in your hand. So I don't really think TV is going too far. Um, a doctor in Los Angeles said in 1969, for a majority of the people, the use of tobacco has a beneficial effect. I think we, we know that from now. Um, we have nothing of importance happened today was said by King George III of England on July 4th, 1776. Well, there is something of importance that happened on July 4th, 1776. Um, DECA Recording rejected the Beatles in 1962 saying, we don't like their sound. Groups of guitars are on the way out. And as we know, the Beatles really did revolutionize what um, the music industry did and, and said and how they become and involved. So when we take a look at those 10 all-time stupid quotes, it's based on someone's viewpoint at that moment in time. And since then, when we go back and look at it, we can see how that would change. Okay? So we take a look at... All of those quotes, there are perceptions about the way things are. Now, when they said that television wouldn't hold their interest, do you know what people used to do at night instead of watching TV? They did. They would sit around and listen to the radio. Or they would actually read. And they didn't think that television would hold their interest as much as those other options. The other thing we have is that with these quotes, that they're either inaccurate or incomplete. The fact is, the people who said them truly believed it. Okay? July 4th, 1776, uh, King George III said nothing of importance happened today. Hello, the United States was formed on that day. It's kind of a big thing. But he truly felt it wasn't of that importance. Take a look at that picture. Dakota, what do you see? A person? Is it a young lady? Or is it an old lady? What do you see? You see an old lady where this is her mouth and this is her nose and her eye, right? Sienna, do you see the young lady? She's looking away. This is her eyelashes. This is her hair. And this is something that's in her hair. And she's kind of, this is her neck coming down. So you either, your perception, you can either see the old lady with her mouth or the lady, chin, eyes. Do you see them now? Yeah. Elena's like, which one do you see, Elena? Old lady. So now imagine that that green thing up on top is coming out the top of her hair, and she's like looking like this. So she's angling away. And you're kind of just seeing a little, like this is a big fur coat over the side. 
Now, if you were to say uh, you see the old lady and I argue and say I see a young lady, and we're going to be arguing over the same thing, who's right? We both are, right? It's a matter of our paradigm or our principle of what we see. Ready for the next one? Sienna, what do you see? You see a guy playing a saxophone? What did you see? Saxophone? You see the face, the lady? Okay. So here's her eyes, her nose, and her mouth. Right? But it's interesting. Your first perception when you looked at it, some people either saw the saxophone or they saw the face. And then now when you see them both, you can kind of be like, face, saxophone, face. Saxophone. What is this? What is it? It's an elephant. How many feet does this elephant have? Right at first you're like, okay, I get this. This is an elephant. Jason, how many feet does he have? Is that possible? <laughs> Right? When you take a look at it, you're like, oh, okay, like, uh, um, how, how does that work? Am I messing with your brain this morning? Yeah, it's good. Again, at first you're like, oh, it's an elephant. It's totally fine. Oh, wait, why, why is there an elephant foot here? But not here. Here, okay, now you're tripping your brain, like how many feet are there on the elephant? Okay, what's this? Stairs. Okay, look at it for a while, because you'll see at first stairs that you can walk up, like normal stairs, and then other side, then if you look a different way, you can actually see the underside of steps. Did it flip for you? It takes a while. And sometimes I would say, like, you could stare here, and then this would be the bottom that you were looking at, or in the upper corner. Like, normally, like, people say, okay, I see the steps I'm going to climb up, but then all of a sudden you see the reverse of it after you look for a while. You able to see it upside down yet, Sienna? Both views are right. It's a matter of internally when you're looking at it and what you're feeling right now, which one you say first? I'm going to bet 95% of you saw at first the normal steps I'm climbing up. And until I said, oh, wait, stare at it, and then you can see the upside down steps. It's a matter of what you look at. Little mind games to start your day on a Thursday. So a paradigm is truly going to be a way that you see something your point of view or your reference or your belief. Sometimes your paradigms can be way off the mark and they can limit you. You may say to yourself, I'm never going to get into college or that nobody likes me. Remember, at some point, people used to be convinced that the earth was flat. Well, there are some people, yes, and... Um, we, we try to educate as much as you can. Uh, it's true. I have heard that in the news in the last week. So with your paradigm and your perceptions of what you have, okay, remember you are going to live up to what you believe. If you believe you can't do it, guess what? That's exactly where you're going to be. You're not going to be able to live up to that because you say, oh, People have told me I'm not this, or I'm not good at that, or I can't do this, I can't do that, so do you even try? Okay. Dakota, what's, what's the hardest class that you've taken? Any, any class. One where you, like, walked in the classroom and you're like, oh, it's hard. Mm. Math? Math tends to be the example that I get a lot. So... Now, I want you to imagine that you're walking into your math class, and you know, Dakota, this has been a struggle of yours, and you're like, oh. 
Now, I want you to think of your favorite class outside of first hour with Mrs. Grassle, okay? And you're walking into that class, and you feel confident. And you're like, I can get this, and I can do it, and you feel really good about it. When you walk into that classroom, do you have a different mindset? Yeah, you do. You totally think, like, in math, you're like, oh. And the minute it gets hard, you're like, ah, I can't do it. I'm not good at math. But in a class where you are engaged or you think that you can do well, the minute that you get poised with a subject or a topic that's a little bit of a challenge, you probably don't say, I'm not good at this. You're like, okay, I'm going to figure it out. It's going to be your viewpoint because you have already told yourself, per se, that you're not good at it. Now, I would say in high school, I struggled with the same thing. I was not good at math. I did not like to do math to do math. Math is important. But for me, math got real the minute I put dollar signs in front of it. And then you talk about being able to calculate financial records and what you need to do for that. I am all over math, and I like it. But I don't want to just do math for math's sake. So I understand that. Um, and truly, once I saw a reason for being able to do it, then I'm like, okay, I got it. I can roll forward with that. So that's going to be your paradigms and perceptions. Has anyone ever seen the image where you have two people looking at each other and on the floor in front of them is a number. Okay, so Bastian, you and I are looking at a, at a number on the ground, and I'm like, it's a six. And what do you say? It's a nine. No, it's a six. Nine, and they fight back and forth. Are they both right? They're looking down. Their viewpoint, their perception is driving their argument. And we are stuck right now in the United States where I'm right. It's a six, you're wrong. And people are going to fight back and forth. Instead of, if I were to take a moment and walk around and look from your side down at that number, what would I might see? I might see your viewpoint. But we are not to that point. We have a lot of people that are arguing that it's my way and your way is wrong. Okay? Remember... If you believe that you are dumb or if you believe you can't do this, it's going to very well make you that way because you are going to fulfill what you think is in your head. Okay, If somebody doesn't like you, you're going to look for those reasons why those people are not going to like you. If you say to yourself, I'm never going to graduate high school, guess what? It's really easy to do things to help support the fact that you're never going to graduate high school. That's not going to happen to anyone in this class, though. We're going to make sure we get you out. Okay? A negative self-paradigm can put limitations on us, and a positive self-paradigm can bring out the best in you. So oftentimes, your viewpoint of what you're looking at yourself and how you're doing things can help switch whether or not you're seeing the best in yourself or not the best. When we take a look at what's going on right now with COVID, it's really easy to be angry and mad about these things that we can't do. But I will also say, some people have found not being able to go out and do things, some things have, have reconnected them with certain family members in their own household that maybe they didn't spend as much time with before because of going out and doing all these activities. So we need to take a look at what you can do to fix your paradigms, okay? So if you had a friend, one of your great friends, who had a negative uh, perception of themselves, Elena, what would you do if you had a really good friend you cared about a lot and they had a lot of negative paradigms about themselves? Okay. And what, what would you tell them is true? Right, you would go through and tell them all of the great things about them. Now, nobody is 100% perfect at everyone, everything. And if you know somebody who says that, you probably don't want to hang out with them very much, right? Because they're going to be that, I'm perfect, nothing wrong with me, and I am by far no means perfect. But the more that you tell somebody something that they're good at, the more they hear it, guess what? the more they believe it. So it's really easy if you have a friend that's struggling to go through and tell them things that they are good at. Okay, And you need to take a look at what you can do to 
overcome those negative paradigms. When you surround yourself with individuals who believe in you, and that's that podcast we had at the beginning, to bring you up, it's going to make you better. If you put yourself by somebody who always says bad, negative, bring you down things, it's going to lower you. So you need to take a look at who are the people that are going to make you be the best. Friend, family member, coworker, somebody that makes you feel like you're doing an amazing job. And take a look at dropping friends who tear you down or who don't believe in you. And don't forget to always remember to go through and look at different people's point of view. Right here in this picture, again, do you see the lady or do you see the saxophone? It doesn't matter. Both of them are there, but you have to understand different people might have a different viewpoint on what's going on. So here's a great quote about friendship with oneself is all important because without it, one cannot be friends with anyone else in the world. You can't be a friend to someone else unless you can like who you are. And here's one. If you don't take control of your life, don't complain when other people do. And you're going to find that as, as soon as you graduate and you're out on your own, there's going to be less people going around and saying you need to do this, you need to do that. It's going to be more of your control. That happens when you turn 18 and get to be uh, the driver of your viewpoint. I'm not going to do the cookie story, but we do want to make sure that we are not quick to judge, label, or form rigid opinions, and we make sure that we have um, all of the facts, and most people's problems are, are a result of a messed up paradigm, a different viewpoint that they have on something, um, so make sure that you analyze it. Is that truly what is happening? So again, that is the beginning part of our Seven Habits book, so thank you.